Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be taking on this disaster detail. It's a Volkswagen Passat. It's, don't know when it's had its last wash, but it's pretty horrible. It's very grubby. And this is going to be the full works. Interior, exterior, polishing, coating, full shebang, wheels. So, let's have a look at the car. So as you can see from those quick still shots there, <clears throat> the car is pretty grubby. Now, it's not a disaster detail where there's crap just lying all over the floor as if somebody's tipped a rubbish can into it. It's a disaster detail in terms of it. It's been sitting for a long time. There's a lot of moss build up on it, a lot of lichen build up on it. The paintwork, the paintwork is rough and the interior is just dirty. It's almost as if a window's been open and a little bit of mold's kind of got in. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to work from the inside to the out with this one. I'm going to crack on with it. I'm not going to talk too much and I'll talk you through the process as I'm as I'm washing away. Not using any particular products in this video, just ones that I think are best suited to get the job done. So less talking, more working. So before I get into the actual interior of the car, I'm going to go around all the door sill areas just with some um, Infinity Wax all-purpose cleaner and a detailing brush just to get them all nice and clean and one job ticks off the list. Once I move into the interior, the first thing that I like to do and if it's a particularly dirty car or dusty car is give it an initial quick hoover just to get as much of the kind of loose stuff out of the way as possible. Then once I'm completely finished I can normally go back over with the hoover another time just to mop up any kind of dust that's left over. So I'm trying something new today and what I've got is a, a GoPro strapped to my head just to see how, how it comes across on camera. But anyway, what I'm using here is I'm using a scrub pad to really get in about the dash there and I'm using Garage Therapy Zero Interior Cleaner. This has actually become a really firm favourite of mine. It, it just cleans really, really well, it dilutes down really well, and it just leaves a really nice OEM finish. No sticky mess to worry about afterwards, just nice clean plastics. Again, using the same combination for the door cards of the scrub pad and the Garage Therapy interior cleaner. Uh, the really good thing I like about these scrub pads is that they've got that microfiber side to them as well. So in areas in particular like that brushed aluminium there, instead of going over it with the stiffer bristled side of things, you can just flip the scrub pad over and, and you can attack that um, delicate area with the microfiber side. Now that I've got all the kind of plastic areas out of the way, it was time to move on to the leather in the car. So this car has got just front and rear leather seats. And for this I'm using again another Yaris Therapy product and I'm using the leather cleaner. I've used this before in a previous video doing the interior of my old M4 and found that it was a fantastic product. So in my mind, once you've found something that's good, there's really any need to change it up and go for something else. Um, this time though, I'm using the bigger leather brush, which actually comes from SGCB, just because these seats are big and the, the bigger brush covers a lot more surface area than the smaller Gary's Therapy brush. Once I finished up with the interior, it was time to crack on with the exterior of the car. I just like that ability to be able to shut the doors and not have to think about the inside anymore. So, as always, starting off with the wheels. Dirtiest part of the car in my opinion, and as you can see from rinsing with the pressure washer alone here, it's doing absolutely nothing to the dirt on and in between the spokes. So, starting off the wheels with a bit of Auto Gland Rebound uh, rubber and tyre cleaner to get the tyres done. And then I'm going to coat the wheels in some Infinity Wax Incinerate. This is a pretty potent product. And in this instance, I'm just going to let it dwell and then I'm going to rinse, leave it for five minutes or so and then rinse it off just to see if it shifts any of this really stubborn brake dust and whatnot uh, without any agitation. And to be fair, it actually did do some work. 
in this instance I didn't want to leave it for too long because even although it's still March, uh, the sun was out and it was actually quite a warm day. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to reapply the product, I'm going to get it on the detailing brush and I'm just going to agitate it up and get rid of the rest of that stubborn brake dust and road dirt and whatever the hell it was that's actually stuck to those wheels in the first place. So after getting that all rinsed off, I thought, while well, I'm at it, I'm just going to get the built hamber uh, Corisol out and deal with any iron fallout that's on and in the wheelbarrows and wait till you see the colour that this lit up. Nah, I'm just kidding. I was playing about with it earlier on uh, just to get a wee picture for the thumbnail, you know, a wee bit of clickbait. But after giving the wheels a really good clean, as you can see from these, these images here, there's still a lot of fallout coming off of the wheels. So even after giving them a really, really good scrub, there was still a lot of iron contaminant in there which just shows how long it's been since this car's had a proper good wash. And then this is how the wheel looks once it's all finished, nice and clean, compared to the disaster that it was before. Gotta say, I'm happy at that transformation. And at last, finally getting to a bit of paintwork. The first thing that I'm going to do, and I don't care who says that you should or shouldn't do this, is pre-rinse the car. This car had a lot of contamination on it. Now, yes, the chemicals probably would take it off as well, but if water pressure alone can do it, why not let the water do it? Don't waste your chemicals, save a bit of money. Following on from that pre-rinse, I'm going to get my citrus pre-wash out. This is Infinity Wax Citrus Pre-Wash. I love this stuff. Diluted here at 10 to 1 in the B&M Home Bargains, whatever it was, pump sprayer. Gets me loads of solution and I can get around the car only having to pump the thing up once and I've still got loads left. Now in this instance I wanted to see if the citrus pre-wash could do the business just on its own and to be fair it took a lot of the stuff away, it took a lot of the stuff on the doors and stuff like that away, however the kind of tree sap that was stuck on the bonnet, the roof and the boot, it didn't touch. So what I did was I put the citrus pre-wash back on and then I lowered layered a layer of snow foam over the top of that. In this instance it's the Squid Ink Alcathroth snow foam. I'm using this because it's thick and it gives an incredibly long dwell time as well as good cleaning power. So it's a win-win in this instance for the this product. So with the citrus underneath it and the, the Alcathroth uh, on top, you get easy 10 to 15 minutes dwell time in this instance. I gave it 10 minutes in the hope that that was enough to kind of bite into that tree sap and stuff like that before getting it all rinsed off and we shall see just shortly if that worked. So given that citrus pre-wash and the snow foam mix a solid 10 minutes worth of dwell time, I could have probably went to 15 if I wanted to but I was starting to lose the light so I thought I better get this off and see if we've made any kind of dent on that sap and other gunk that was stuck to the bonnet, the roof and the boot. It done a really good job on the doors, as you'd expect with a basically a double hit of citrus pre-wash and then a, a hit of snow foam as well. Done some really good cleaning on the lower half of the car. However, as you're about to see, the bonnet, the roof and the boot needed a little bit more. So rinsing off the bonnet here, I'm hopeful that you'll see the kind of black, black specks that's stuck on the car. Um, they just were not for budging with chemicals. So I'm thinking that a dose of tar and glue remover might do the trick, or it might just be a case of using the clay bar to get rid of them. We'll see how we get on later on in the wash. Believe it or not, we're actually on to the following day here and what I've done was basically I've given the car a quick rinse down. Um, the days just are not long enough yet to finish work and then get out and make a video. You would be absolutely surprised at just how long it takes to wash a car when you're trying to record the process as well. So like I say, on to the next day here and we're going to start off with a contact wash. For this, 
I'm using Garage Therapy Zero Decon and along with the Garage Therapy Wash Pad. We all know how good Zero Decon is, I've made videos on it before. I'm not going to bore you with all the stats, so I'll leave a link if you want to go and check out another video. Following on from the contact wash, it's time to go on with the decontamination stage. And I like to start my decon with a bit, a bit of tar and glue remover, because that could be hiding some fallout. So you're best to get the tar off first, then deal with the fallout later. And for tar and glue remover, I'm using the Geon tar and glue remover. Pretty sure I've spoke about this before, but it's not like any normal tar and glue remover in the way that it doesn't absolutely stink, it's actually a really pleasant scented product to use. Definitely one worth trying out if you get the chance. And then following on with the fallout remover, I just used the trusty good old Built Hamber Corisol fallout remover. It does a job, it works well, can't really ask for anything more from a fallout remover. Just wait till you see the shot of the back bumper. The brake discs on this car were absolutely shot and must have sprayed contamination all over it. So without showing you the full decontamination process, the last thing that I did before getting on with the polishing phase was just go over the whole car with a clay bar just to make sure that the paint was nice and contaminant free before cracking on with the polish. Now what I'm doing is I'm just using a medium pad with Zvisor medium compound, it's a one step compound just to go over the car once before I lay down some protection. Now although the paintwork on the car was really really dirty and obviously had its um, imperfections in terms of the, the moss build up and stuff like that, the car was actually relatively swirl free probably because it's never seen a wash in its life. So just the, the one step single stage polish before the protection was uh, more than enough for this car to get a really really nice finish. It's not going to be winning any awards it shows but it'll do for what it is. I'm not going to show too much polishing content here as to be honest it can get quite repetitive so a couple of sets and then we're going to go on to the protection phase. And for the protection, I'm going to be using a ceramic coating. Yes, that's right. I'm going to be applying a ceramic coating outside. And the coating that I'm going to be using is Infinity Wax Synergy White. This is a sprayable coating that can last up to one year with good preparation. All you need to do is get a microfiber applicator pad, like I'm doing here. Spray it on the pad and then apply a panel at a time as per the instructions. Now I know I'm not wearing gloves, I should be, but I don't have any left. I need to get some more ordered, is what it is. But in terms of this product, this product is insanely easy to use. If you're thinking about ceramic coating your car on your own, this is probably one that you should think about getting. This is the first time that I've used this product. And I've got to say, it is so, so user friendly. It is literally apply a panel at a time and you've got up to 15 minutes to get it off. Now I was probably working between 10 and 15 degrees this afternoon and, you know, I was doing a panel at a time, giving it a little minute and then removing it. And wait till you see just how good the car looks once we're all finished up here. Try to play it, but you're never gonna beat me Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy Bloody hands stain from the people who deceive me Muddy hands break through the chains, go free me Looking for change, looking for pain Pulling a mob, pushing a train I'll never stop, stick to a lane Pick up the pieces and go rearrange, yeah. And that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you like this kind of content, as always, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. He got a new engine from planets of blessing, new focus, no guessing, just bought an obsession. I'll lend his possession. You got the retention, I'll leave an impression and take a redemption. Just kill no discretion. Your mind is a weapon. 11 11 is time for progression.